Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Fallout Commander deck? Patrolling all these Universes Beyond products almost has me wishing for an Eldrazi Winter, as these four Commander decks hit shelves hoping to bring in new players to the game and format, while also providing cool cards and decks to those already established. But with steep competition from the previous Universes Beyond Commander products, how exactly will these decks compare to everything from from Warhammer 40k to Doctor Who and Lord of the Rings. For those who aren't familiar with Fallout, it's a series about nuclear war, sending the world into oblivion, in which you play the sole survivor, a dragonborn who is on a quest to defeat Alduin, the mysterious owner of the Lucky 38 Monastery atop the throat of the world. So in the game, the Legion army is led by a man named Ulfric Stormcloak, and oh, well, I guess you really don't want a lore video. This is supposed to be about if it's worth it to buy the these commander decks? Are they of interest to experienced Magic players? Are they a good starting point for Fallout fans who may be looking to shuffle up and play Magic thanks to these decks? Do they have good reprints? What about the new card designs? And best of all, how fun are they to play? Are they balanced against one another? Well, all those questions and more are what's in store, so let's take a look. But first, you're gorgeous. That's right, you're gorgeous and attractive and people like you, and that's awesome, and I wanted to tell you that. Really, that's the ad. You see, beauty and attractiveness comes from the person themselves and how they choose to present themselves to the world is attractive because they are attractive. I like to wear this type of clothes, but if you like t-shirts or shredded up punk rocker, jean jackets? That's awesome, because that's you. I like my hair like this. Maybe you like your hair short. Maybe you're bald or balding, and that is attractive because you are attractive, but what happens if, in the same way you might want to dress a certain way, you want to have your hair a certain way, but Mother Nature has a different idea? Well, that's where the sponsor of this video, Keeps, comes in. You see, Keeps is a men's subscription service to prevent hair loss and stimulate hair growth. That's because two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35. And if you're starting to see the early signs of hair loss and you want to prevent it, well, don't worry, because Keeps has you covered. Keeps offers FDA-approved treatments that are clinically proven to be up to 90 90% effective at treating hair loss and can increase hair growth by up to 35%. Most customers notice results within six months of starting their treatment. Keeps also offers hair thickening shampoo, conditioner, and styling products to help you meet your hair goals. Best of all, all Keeps treatment plans are recommended by a licensed medical provider and delivered straight to your door at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. It's fast, it's affordable, it's safe and secure, it's Keeps. So remember, you're goddamn sexy, bald, balding, long hair hair or short, but if you do want to go in a different direction than Mother Nature has in mind, well, hair loss stops with Keeps. To get a special offer, go to keeps.com forward slash Tolarian or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tolarian, and thank you, Keeps, for sponsoring this video. A Fallout Commander deck contains the following. One 100-card playable right-out-of-the-box commander deck featuring two foil cards, one cardboard life wheel, a quote-unquote deck box, one thick commander proxy token, one collector booster sample pack, and 10 double-sided tokens. The sample pack, as always, contains a chance at cards that can only be found in collector boosters, but the real draw to these decks are the approximately 40 new card designs per deck. It's actually not an even divide for Fallout, as Mutant Menace has 41 new card designs, with both Science and Scrappy Survivors having 38 brand new card designs, and Hail Caesar only having 37. But that does mean that within these four decks are nearly 180 brand new card designs, as well as a lot of reprints. And of course, all four decks feature entirely new art, even on the basic lands. In terms of flavor, these decks are fantastic. As a fan of the Fallout series, I really feel that a lot of effort and care went into both the flavor and aesthetic of these cards, as well as having mechanics match up to what a card represents. Those card mechanics and designs, however, do feel a little modest, especially when compared to 
to Warhammer and Doctor Who. There's some really cool commanders in here, don't get me wrong, and I even did a guide to building a three dog Galaxy News DJ deck. And you should check out that video if you have not done so already, but the overall power level of many of these new cards feels somewhat restrained from prior outings. While there are a few nice reprints, which I will cover in a moment, the mana bases here are also a big disappointment, a real step backwards from Doctor Who. After those souped up mana bases, I feel really disappointed to see that these commander decks have mana bases that are not really all that different from any other commander pre-con release. While I don't think the design on them is a disaster or anything, there's not much special about it, and that is a problem when you consider that these are premium decks with premium pricing. Just how much are they going for? Well, these commander decks are going for, interestingly, $59 each on Amazon, which is reason 4,659 not to shop on Amazon, because other magic sellers have them for less in most cases. TCG Player does have all but Mutant Menace for less than Amazon, though 70 being the cheapest for Mutant Menace is unfortunate, considering that is $60 over at Amazon. Card Kingdom, sponsor of this channel, has Science, for only 42 bucks, and Scrappy Survivors for $49.99, but is charging $59 for Hail Kaisar and $69 for Mutant Menace, which is not so nice. And not to veer once again into a different video topic, but it sure would be awesome if these products had an MSRP. That way we could know if $49.99 is the price that was intended for them or if it's $59.99. And while the price range from these online sellers and marketplaces does appear to be $49.99 to $59.99, this video is going to work with an intended price of $49.99. Obviously, you can punch in whatever your local prices are. I urge you as always not to pay markups, especially not above that price, at least not one week in, as again, it is very likely Wizards of the Coast is printing more of these. Even looking at previous universes beyond Commander decks, we can see that Warhammer is currently selling for $50 each, except for the mono black deck, which is a whopping 75. But it's interesting to see that even after all this time, three of the four decks can be had for $50 each. Lord of the Rings, too, is selling in the $40 to $66 range depending on which you might like to pick up. And Doctor Who decks are currently selling for, wow, as low as 30 and $34. $55 for the villains deck, and David Tennant is somehow commanding a price of $82? Are people just buying that one because it's the 10th Doctor on the cover? I don't know, I think I might snap up that $34 Tom Baker deck. And of course, you can always go to my Profs Picks page on Card Kingdom by following www.cardkingdom.com forward slash TCC, where I maintain a collection of old Commander Precons that sell for less less than $45 each. If nothing else, looking at what I have assembled here might give you an idea of which decks to seek out at local game stores. But with stores charging $50 to $60 each for these commander decks, are they even worth it financially? Are those new card designs things of interest for commander players, and just what reprints of note do they contain? Let's take a look at financial value. If you were to buy the singles from each of these decks, how much would it cost you? For science, exclamation mark, you'd have to spend $86.94. For Mutant Menace, you would have to spend $139.86. For Hail Kaisar, $109.21. And finally, for Scrappy Survivors, you'd have to spend the most at $159.44. Please keep in mind, these prices are pre-release pricing 24 hours before release, and these prices will likely decline once this product hits shelves. Also, a non-zero amount of this value comes from bulk, meaning cards that are not even worth $1. What if we eliminate that bulk? Well, in that case, Science, exclamation mark, has only 22 cards out of 100 that are worth more than a dollar each, and the total non-bulk value is only $60.83. Considering that is how much Amazon is selling this deck for, let alone the value that is in other universes beyond Commander decks, immediately puts Science exclamation mark at the bottom of our financial list. The most valuable card in this deck is Nuka-Cola Vending Machine at $9.91, and then not much else. The highest value reprints here are Lightning Greaves and Panharmonicon, both of which have been printed plenty of times already, and their prices aren't significantly affected by the reprint. Beyond that, the only value, what 
there is is in the new card designs. In terms of gameplay, science sees the return of the energy mechanic, originally from the Kaladesh block. Cards like Plasma Caster and Automated Assembly Line generate energy for you to sink into your energy payoffs like T-45 Power Armor and Liberty Prime, the secondary commander for the deck. Science is also an artifact beatdown deck, with cards like Sentinel, Sarah Lyons, and the Pridewen Steel Flagship rewarding you with combat-focused buffs for playing artifacts. The face commander, Dr. Madison Lee, is a solid energy source, giving you energy for casting artifact spells. Dr. Madison Lee is also the most versatile energy sink in the deck, letting you trade energy for plus one plus zero, trample, and haste on a creature a draw, or an artifact returned to the battlefield from the graveyard. Unfortunately, besides Dr. Madison Lee, there's not a lot in here that impresses me as far as energy is concerned. When I first heard that the science deck would be based around energy, I got very excited. Energy was an awesome mechanic in Kaladesh and has just been begging for a reinvention and revitalization, but neither of which really happened here. The deck lacks synergy, and aside from that face commander, there's not really anything too interesting going on with energy in these new card designs. A real disappointment. Mutant Menace has 36 out of 100 cards worth more than a dollar each. That's more like it, isn't it? And the total non-bulk value here is $119.75. The most valuable card in the deck is Nuclear Fallout at $8.81, so while still much of the value is in new designs, there are more noteworthy reprints here, like Guardian Project, which has only seen reprints in Ravnica Remastered and The List since its original Ravnica Allegiance printing. And while this Fallout version is only going for $6, $6.86, other versions of the card are still going for around $10. In terms of gameplay, Mutant Menace is the weirdest of the four Fallout decks on offer, focusing on this new Rad Counter. Radical! Oh no, wait, different Rad. Any player with a Rad Counter mills cards equal to the number of Rad Counters they have on their pre-combat main phase. For each non-land card they mill, they lose a life and a Rad Counter. An easy way to think about Rad Counters is that each Rad Counter will eventually turn into to one damage, but could end up milling a player multiple times depending on what ends up milled. Despite the mill, this deck isn't looking to deck anyone. Instead, this deck wants to put as much radiation on as many players as possible, including ourselves, to get the most out of cards like Meyer Lurk Queen and Raoul Troubleshooter which give us value whenever cards are milled. There's also a heavy plus one plus one counters theme, with hardened scales, branching evolution, and corpse jack menace, all powering up a plethora of creatures that make plus one plus one counters. I really applaud what they were going for with this deck. It's new, it's innovative, and the creation of rad counters is a flavor win as well as mechanically very interesting. The deck's face commander, the wise Mothman, is a straightforward representation of all these themes. Repeatedly handing out rad counters and growing your board with plus one plus one counters as cards are milled. Maybe not the best deck for someone brand new to Magic the Gathering, but I think this is the one that best scratches that MTG itch for established players. More on that in a moment. Hail Kaisar has 35 out of 100 cards, worth more than a dollar each, but the total value of all of these doesn't crack $100, and instead is only $90.62. The most valuable card in the deck is Rose Cutthroat Raider at $6.82. Pitiless Plunderer and Skull Clamp are the most valuable reprints here, both at about $5 each. Other notable reprints include Fervent Charge, the first reprint since Apocalypse. Price for the regular version of this was at $5, even though its reprint here is only commanding $1.40 in pre-sale. Ruinous Ultimatum also sees its first reprint since Ikoria. It was going for about $7 before being reprinted here, with the Fallout version going for $2.40 and the Magic the Gathering version still selling for about $4 each. In terms of gameplay, Hail Kaisar is a Mardu, combat-focused deck that wants to fill the board with expendable creatures and attack relentlessly. Now we're talking. Cards with the squad mechanic, like Ruthless Radrat, 
and token producers like Assemble the Legion make sure you always have creatures to turn sideways, and aristocrat payoffs like Morbid Opportunist and Pitiless Plunderer reward you when your attackers die. I had so much fun jamming games with this deck, even though I never ever ally with the Legion when I play New Vegas, oh my god, I must say that I had an incredibly fun time playing with this deck. The face commander, Kaisar, Legion's Emperor, embodies the deck's strategy perfectly, asking us to sacrifice a creature whenever we attack. When we do, we get rewarded with two of the following three modes. Two attacking 1-1s, one a card draw, or damage to a player equal to the number of creature tokens we control. The first two modes make Kaisar a valuable engine all on his own, as well as a convenient way to repeatedly activate our aristocrats' payoffs. And the direct damage mode can really help close out a game once you get ahead. Piloting this deck was also very straightforward. It's one that I would recommend to those new to Magic the Gathering, or just the Commander format, and I think its overall strategy and construction is more or less a home run. Though, uh, the mana base could be better. God, they were so good in Doctor Who, what happened? Finally, Scrappy Survivors has 36 out of 100 cards worth more than a dollar each, and the total value here is a whopping $142.85, making this deck the most financially valuable, both with bulk included and without. The most valuable card in the deck is the Pip-Boy 3000, worth $13.81. This deck also has valuable reprints like, wow, Heroic Intervention at $6.85, another card that was commanding close to $10 before being reprinted here. That Pip-Boy 3000 isn't just the most valuable card in this deck, by the way, it's the most valuable card in the entire Fallout set, not counting special treatments, of course. And I'm proud to say it was Talarian Community College's pick for best card for the 99, so I guess we got that one right. In terms of gameplay, while this Naya Auras and Equipment deck might not seem like the most interesting pre-con theme, Scrappy Survivors plays with a little more nuance than your typical Voltron Fair. There's a significant graveyard sub-theme with cards like Veronica, Dissident Scribe, and Cass, Hand of Vengeance, filling the yard, and cards like Mantle of the Ancients and Brotherhood Outcast, bringing back our auras and equipment. You'll also incidentally stockpile junk tokens as the game progresses with cards like Mr. Gusty, which you can cash in for a ton of impulsive draws. While I feel this is a clever little deck, I think that it would benefit most from upgrades. As looking over the list, there's a lot of cards that I would swap out for more effective existing magic cards. I think that an upgraded version of this deck is going to be really solid, but again, I feel this is a deck that doesn't play as great out of the box as it could, but it still plays decent, and Dogmeat, ever loyal, our face commander, does a nice job helping out with the deck's themes. In terms of overall power, I feel science is dead last, as overall, that energy mechanic never fully synergizes within the deck. Oh, I feel it's such a missed opportunity, but yeah, the science deck is my last pick. Scrappy Survivors is the next next least powerful of the four. There's some good individual cards in here, don't get me wrong, and the deck pilot's fine, but it is still a deck that I feel needs a lot of upgrades, as there are so many, many more existing cards that would be much more effective than a lot of the ones included here. That just leaves Hail Kaisar and Mutant Menace, two very different decks, and yet I feel these are tied for the best of the four. Hail Kaisar is actually the deck I'd recommend to any Fallout fans that have started playing Magic the Gathering for the first time because of the these products. It's powerful and yet really easy to pilot, with a classic feet on the ground strategy that works well for either new players or just players new to Commander, which leaves Mutant Menace as my pick for anyone already firmly established in Magic the Gathering. I personally enjoy the Kaisar deck more, but recognize that Mutant Menace is the most complex of the four, much better synergy within it, and some really cool new ideas utilizing the rad counters. All of that means it's most likely to scratch that established player's itch, we're set established player only looking to buy one of these four decks. Now, I hope you don't take any of what I just said as disparaging against these decks. They are great pre-cons, and a person being handed any one of them as their first commander deck will still be able to have a fun experience and a deck that can be played right out of the box to jam with friends, but the trick in that scenario is that you have just been handed the commander deck. Unfortunately, we get more scrutinous once we have to buy it. At $50 and 
up. And yeah, we saw pre-orders at 60 bucks and for something like this, 70 and up for the Mutants deck, it just becomes less and less impressive at that price. And when you compare that financial value to other universes beyond Commander decks, such as looking at the value that Warhammer 40K or Doctor Who had when they were released, you can see that, especially in the case of Science and even Hail Kaisar, financially speaking anyway, these Fallout decks fall short. And it's just ridiculous to be expected to pay over $50 for any one of these decks. Nonetheless, I do like these decks, and if you can find them for $50 and not $70 and up, then I still feel confident in saying that you can't go wrong with just picking the one that personally interests you most, be it by card design, deck strategy, or just plain flavor. Provided again, we are talking $50 per box. Final conclusion. Fallout Commander decks stumble a little in terms of financial value, and you should not pay more than $50 for any one of these decks. The decks do an amazing job of capturing the flavor and feel of Fallout, both in artwork and card design, and any fans of the series should find these cards to be a fantastic addition to their collection. Any one of these decks can be played right out of the box by new players, but also have a lot to offer to existing ones. While not quite on the level of Warhammer or Doctor Who, this is still an excellent product, though at many places it has a not so excellent price tag. An overall grade is an A minus provided, and this is a big provided, that you do not pay above $50. If you really must pay $60 for one of these, then the grade becomes a B. And I will flat out say that anything over $60 simply is not worth it. I do think, if nothing else, there's a lot of great singles for existing Commander players to pick up, either as pieces of the 99 or to serve as a cool new Commander. We actually did an in-depth guide to building 3-Dog here, and even if you are not planning to build that particular Commander, I think you should check out this video as we go over a lot of cool card combos that might still apply to your Commander deck, Commander strategy and analysis, and other cool stuff. It's all in that video, so if you have not already watched it, then do me a favor, give it a click or follow the link in this video's description. And remember, you are gorgeous and sexy with long hair, short hair, bald, balding, whatever it is, you are what is attractive and however you want to present yourself is awesome. But what happens if you want to present yourself as someone with a different type of hair than Mother Nature would like? Well, that's where Keeps comes in. Remember, Keeps is just a tool. You use it to help yourself in presenting yourself as you wish to be presented. And right now, you can get a special offer by going to keeps.com forward slash Tolarian or clicking the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tolarian. And hey, thank you, Keeps, for sponsoring this video.